Now we're going to be looking at how to graph a function in its inverse. We've previously looked at this function y equals x squared minus 1 and found its inverse. We found the inverse by switching x and y and then solving for y. Now because we had to take a square root, we had to do plus or minus that square root. So now we're going to look at what the graph of the function and its inverse looks like. When graphing a function and its inverse, we're simply just going to look at the original function first, and then we're going to focus on the inverse later. Now here my function is y equals x squared minus 1, which is going to be a parabola. So when graphing a parabola, you always first find the vertex. Now to find the vertex, you use the vertex formula up here. Now for this particular function, I have no b, which means that the x-coordinate is going to be 0. And when I plug in 0 back into the function here, I'm just going to get negative 1. So now we want to pick values of x that are close to my vertex. So I'm going to pick 1, and I'm going to pick 2. Now when I plug in 1 into the function, I'm just going to get 0. When I plug in 2, I'm going to get 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plot these points. So 0, negative 1, 1, 0, and 2, 3. Now I'm going to reflect those over the axis of symmetry. So that's going to also give me negative 1, 0, and negative 2, 3. Connecting my points here, I have my parabola. Now graphing the inverse is even easier, because remember, the definition of an inverse is just that we switch the domain and range. So I'm simply going to take the domain of my original parabola, and that becomes the range, and then take the range, and that becomes the domain. So I'm just going to switch the coordinates here. And graphing is simply that easy too. We're just going to graph these points. So I'm going to have negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, and 0, negative 1, and 3, negative 2. Notice now it reflects over the x-axis instead of the y-axis. Some of the points will overlap, and that's fine. And then connecting those, we get the graph of the inverse. Now we can tell by looking at this graph, and hopefully by just looking at the equation of the inverse, that this is not going to be a function. It's not going to pass the vertical line test. So here's the same function that we just graphed, and then it's inverse. And as you can see, that it reflects over the line y equals x. Now, this will always happen when you graph a function and then it's inverse, or even a relation and then it's inverse. It will always reflect over the line y equals x due to the symmetry in switching x and y. So now we're going to look at this function g of x equals 4 over x plus 2, and we're going to find its inverse. So finding the inverse just means switching x and y. So we're going to pretend that g of x is the same as y right now, so switching those. Now there's many ways to try to solve for y here. One method is to treat this like it's over 1 and then we're going to cross multiply. So cross multiplying I get x times the entire quantity x plus 2 equals 4. Now solving for y I'm going to divide each side by x. These will divide out. y plus 2 is equal to 4 over x. Now subtracting 2 I get y equals 4 over x minus 2. So this is going to be g inverse of x. So now we're going to compose g with its inverse and then plug in the value 0.
So another way to write g of g inverse of 0 is g of g inverse of 0. So we're going to evaluate this a little bit differently. We're going to go ahead and plug in 0 into the inverse function and then plug in our result into g. So plugging in 0 into the inverse function, hopefully you can see that this is going to cause an issue. I'm not allowed to have 0 in the denominator. So this is going to be undefined or does not exist. Now the reason is that 0 does not belong in the domain of the inverse function, therefore 0 will not belong in the domain of the composition function. So now doing the composition the other way, g inverse of g of 0, let's go ahead and plug in 0 into g, which will give me g inverse of 4 over 2, which is g inverse of 2. So now plugging 2 into g inverse, so now I'm going to take 2 and plug that into the inverse function. That leaves me with 4 over 2 minus 2, so I'm just plugging in the 2 here, which would be 2 minus 2, which will be 0. So g inverse of g of 0 is equal to 0, but the other way around, it does not exist because 0 is not in the domain of the original function. So go ahead and give these two a try. Number one is a graph of a function and its inverse, so make sure that you have the function and its inverse on the same coordinate plane.